The cyclotron. The cyclotron is a type of particle accelerator that consists of two D-shaped regions which have a magnetic field within them. In this case we'll say the magnetic field is coming towards us out of the screen. In the central region here we connect up to an alternating potential difference. And if we now inject an electron at this point, when this side is positively charged and the electric field is therefore towards the right, the electron will be accelerated towards the left in this direction. When the electron enters the left-hand D region, it will then be in a magnetic field and so will experience a force. To find the direction of the force using Fleming's left-hand rule, we need to point the first finger of your left hand towards you for the direction of the magnetic field. If the electron is moving to the left, that is a conventional current to the right, so your second finger needs to point in the direction of the current to the right. Your thumb now, for the thrust, will be pointing downwards. That will cause the electron to move in a circular path round here. If, while it is within this region, the potential difference has changed, making this side negatively charged and this side positively charged, the electron will then accelerate across this gap. When it enters this region, it will follow a circular path again. It will now be travelling slightly faster, and we'll see in a moment why that makes the circular path slightly larger radius. While it's in this region, this side becomes negatively charged and this side positively charged due to the alternating potential difference. So the electron is accelerated across the gap again. It follows an even wider circular path, accelerates across the gap, and so on. So it would follow a path something like this. So the electrons are accelerated in this central region. The direction of the acceleration changes due to the changing potential difference and the changing electric field in this region. They have a constant speed when in the Ds, as there is no electric field here, just a magnetic field. The force on them, due to moving in the magnetic field, BQV, gives them their centripetal force needed for the circular motion, mv squared over r, meaning that the radius of their motion will be given by mv squared over bqv, which simplifies to mv over bq. The mass of the electron, the magnetic flux density and the charge of the electron are constant, and so as the speed of the electron increases, so does its radius of motion, as shown in the diagram. So as their speed increases, the radius of their path increases, and so the distance they need to travel within the magnetic field increases. Let's look at the effect this has on the time for them to do one complete orbit. Well, time taken is equal to distance travelled divided by speed, and in this case the distance travelled is 2 pi r, the circumference of the circle of radius r, their speed being v. As we saw previously, the force due to the magnetic field BQV produces the centripetal force for the electrons mv squared over r. This gives us the radius of the motion as being mv squared over BQV. Again we can cancel one of the v's from the bottom and top giving the radius as mv over BQ. So we get that the time period is equal to 2 pi mv over BQV. The v's top and bottom can cancel giving us the time period for a cyclotron as 2 pi m over bq, m being the mass of the particle, b the magnetic flux density within the d's, and q the charge on the particle. This has no v term in, so the time period, and therefore the frequency of the AC supply needed for the cyclotron, is independent of the speed of the particles. As the electrons speed up, they have further to go, and so they take the same length of time to travel around a D before entering a gap and being accelerated again.